when Robin Williams died, it brought me back to the one time when I had met him, which was in the plains of Hungary at five in the morning. But I'll get back to that soon. I had the great, great fortune of being an editor and a writer in the most remote places anywhere in the world. And I interviewed Duke Ellington in Laos, of all places, and Muhammad Ali, of course, in Malaysia. And the few of the comics which I want to talk about very, very quickly, Bob Hope, who I spent a few days with, he was a great engineer and he drove his writers like Henry Ford drove people on the assembly line. He drove the car very well, but he didn't have any originality at all. Danny Kay, who did incredible things in the village of Thailand when he was with UNICEF, and afterwards he was a statue. He was nothing. But now came three other people. One was Peter Ustinov, and I spent a day with with him for a publicity thing in Phuket in Thailand. He was funny, he was imitative, he was delightful, he was droll, we went swimming together. And then he had a few drinks and he mentioned the name of Kurt Voldheim, who he'd had dinner with the other night. Now Kurt Voldheim was head of the Nazis of, what was, was it, not Hungary. Yeah, yes, right. And I said, oh yeah, him. He said, are you one of those people who doesn't like Kurt Voldheim? And I said, well, he said, I know what kind of people you are. And he then went into a very, very serious sermon, and I listened to it. Geniuses have their way. Here were two, here were two other people, though, Jonathan Winters and his mentor, Robin Williams. Jonathan Winters uh, was doing a tour of Vietnam, you know, going to see the boys. He was extraordinary there. And I had the chance when he came over to Bangkok, they said, do you want to interview Johnny? And I said, sure I do. There was somebody from the American Armed Forces. I went up to the hotel room where he was, and he wasn't there yet, and they said, now, he's a pretty interesting person. You're going to, there, there were all the soldiers were around. They're a pretty interesting guy. You'll like him. But you've got to be very careful what you ask him. I said, really? He said, oh, yeah, a tough guy, tough guy. Jonathan Winters came in, and he said, nice to meet you, and he shook my hand very nicely. And I said, without much thinking, well, how How's the trip been? That was at 2.30 in the afternoon. At 5 o'clock, he had finished his monologue. And it was an extraordinary monologue because not a single word was fast, out of place. Everything seemed to roll around so beautifully and so quickly. He was sculpting his whole speech, which went from the totally outrageous, how owls think about mouse breath, to things with the soldiers, to, to parts of his insane asylum. He had been in asylum for a while, nervous breakdown. He went on and on, and it went on, and, and it spread out over and over. And at 5.30, I said, excuse me, um, Jonathan, he said, yes, I got a, I got a six o'clock deadline. Oh, I see. Uh, do you have any more questions? And I said, no, <laughs> this was fine. That was, the, that was the easiest time any interviewer had ever had. But here was the late Robin Williams, and this was a story which has another meaning which I can't ever explain. i had been editor of a City Life magazine in Budapest, in Hungary, the first English language City Life magazine, you know, based upon New York in its own way. And I heard that Robin Williams was in town to make a movie, which he was. And the movie I don't think was ever released. It was called Jacob the Liar, where he played an old Jewish con man or something. I went over to the hotel where he was staying, and I knew somebody at the hotel. They introduced me to him. He was coming in about six in the evening. He'd been out filming all day. And I said, hi, Robin, good to meet you. I'm editor, I wonder, blah, blah. He said, oh, I'd love to see you. He said, uh, I have a five in the morning call tomorrow. Come out in the car with me. I said, okay, that sounds great. What are you doing right now? I said, I've got to review an opera. I'm the music reviewer for a magazine. Which opera? I said, Marriage of Figaro. He says, oh my God, I wish I could come. I wish, I really wish I could come. Mozart is my favorite, absolutely. I said, come along, I can get you another ticket. He says, I got an early wake up call. That was interesting. I got to the hotel at 4.30 and got into the car, he was more or less sleeping. That was fine with me. I would see what would happen. We drove out for about 45 minutes to the most arid, remote, horrifying plains of Hungary, which Genghis Khan and Kublai Khan had deforested a couple of thousand, a couple of hundred years ago, 1,500 years ago, and it's still nothing had ever grown there. 
He had about 30 minutes before he had to go on. This is what happened. The, all the workmen were around there. They were talking, they were having breakfast, there were various things they could do. The director, a few of the other actors were off in their own way. Robin went over, got out of the car, stretched, he knew he had a bit of time, went over to see the workmen, and he said, oh, Yol Rajit, Yol Rajit, you know, oh, Yol, Yol uh, Abram Magar, you know, which means good morning, are you having fun? And they said, immediately in Madra, the most difficult, it makes Russian look like, like a nursery rhyme, the most difficult, I tried to learn it, I never could. And they said, oh, he speaks language, he speaks the language, you know, and they all got together, they were chatting away. Somebody asked him a question in Hungarian, and this is what happened. He spoke to them in Hungarian for the next 15 minutes, and not a single word was Hungarian. <laughs> the, the, in, this, no one, I, you know comics, Phil, I have every inflection was right, every word was right, every sound, every phoneme, every syllable, the syntax was absolutely correct, and not a single word was Hungarian, and the workmen listened to him, and they cracked up like nothing you have ever seen in your life. Ah, now, I am, I'm a classical music reviewer, and I've met geniuses in my time. And I have, this was a kind of genius which no musician, no composer has ever even attempted. It was the imitation of sounds, so beautiful. It was real, Bernie, this was poetry because it was the sound, and the sound had its own meaning totally. And then they said, 15 minutes, Robin, you've got to go on. And he said goodbye to them in some unknown language, went to get himself made up. I had to go back early. He would be there all day. But never in my life have I heard pure genius like this was. And when he died, I don't cry, but a lot of people in Hollywood cried, and I just smiled because it was one of the most beautiful bits of imagination that any person could ever have in the history of imagination. Thank you very much.